Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to the sixth episode of uh, Genomics Gupshap. Uh, this is a platform where we can uh, address uh, different issues with, with medical doctors, molecular biologists, and others who are connected with the genomics field, uh, so that we can all build a little bit more trust with each other. Um, so today we are, have a very young and dynamic uh, oncologist, uh, surgical oncologist, uh, Dr. Aishwarya, who is here with us. And it's very exciting to see um, you know, such a young, enterprising doctor uh, who not just knows a lot about oncology, but also has a lot of uh, knowledge about genomics as well. Thank so you welcome, so much. Dr. Aishwarya. Thank you so much for having me. So Dr. Aishwarya, uh, let's begin with what inspired you or who inspired you to become a doctor? So that would be my parents. Since early childhood, I had an exposure of the field, like what it requires, the rigorous working hours, the dedication and that you will have to sacrifice the time that you give to your family for this career but it never kind of put, put uh, I never like faltered, it never faltered me when I was going for this career and I always wanted to be a surgeon after working with my mom who's a gynecologist so I had a love for the OT so that's how I was pushed here and oncology is a very advanced branch, it is a very ever changing branch and you get to um, you get exposures of cancer of the entire body. That's how I end, ended up be becoming an oncosurgeon. But oncology is also uh, you know it's a difficult uh, area to be in, right? Yes. Because most of the people who are coming to you are uh, they look at you as almost like uh, as God, right? Yes. Because you are because cancer is a very difficult diagnosis, uh, not only for the patient but also the relatives. So handling them and explaining them the uh, prognosis and whether or not we'll be able to cure them has a very uh, it's a very difficult job and patients all, um, are most often very emotional the relatives are very emotional and they a lot of time relatives hide the diagnosis from the patients and still the patients undergo treatment so there's a lot of family dynamics that we get involved into and it's a very nice branch because it keeps changing like oncology keeps evolving there are new medicines there are new advancements it's a very evolving kind of a branch but uh, do you think that uh, there is a possibility of um, you know getting people patients to come earlier for better better treatment because i think a large number of people who probably come to you are for later stage cancer? Yes, or? in India that is a major problem that patients don't come early, even educated patients and the cancers in which we uh, do so much about uh, education and awareness programs, especially like breast cancer, mm -hmm. even then women ignore it and come at later stages and you would not even, uh, it's not restricted to the uneducated people, even educated women, sometimes even doctors are diagnosed late for such common diseases like breast cancer. And do you think that if we could do an earlier screening of like large populations, I know some of it might yes. not even be feasible, but if there was a possibility of doing a universal screening, would you think that's something that is a possibility or do you think we should uh, still restrict it to, uh, especially if it is, so no, there are two so types of screening. Yes. Right? So there are, since there are a lot of types of cancers and the incidence of each varies, breast cancer is so common that any person at risk should be at screening and there are uh, like lung cancer that's a little rarer I mean, it is common but it is more common among the smokers mm -hmm. so evidence has shown that uh, sm the smokers if they are screened that causes early detection and for cancers early detection is the key that is the only uh, hope of cure that you have that you detect it early so the earlier you detect the better is your the better purpose. the response you will have and uh, so if you if you think about uh, screening and think about genetics and all um, do you use uh, genomics in cancer of course you know it's something that is worldwide i think is probably the one area that uh, genomics is probably used a lot in but yes so in cancer uh, we have moved towards pre precision medicine which is like uh, initially we were uh, treating it like breast cancer then we found that it has multiple histological types and we were treating each histology differently and now we have moved to precision medicine in which we uh, get the exact diagnosis which gene is defective which has caused the disease how it will affect which drug will act on it 
and how the genes of your body how which drug they will respond to maximum so it is it, it is, is very much in play and in uh, in oncology precision medicine is coming up in a big way um so uh, you know let's go to a little bit more fun part yeah. i'd like yeah. to uh, keep interacting i was very i was uh, looking at all your uh, social media handles and yes. one of the areas where i found was your dr kirk yeah right uh, so are you like captain kirk or mm. how did this name come about yeah so actually i'm a big big bang theory fan and they keep mentioning captain kirk all the time and so i thought that since kirk is cancer in hindi maybe i can put my insta handle as dr kirk <laughs> i think it's a very fascinating name <laughs> Thank i you really so much. love it but you're not a star trek fan no not at all <laughs> i'm just a big time nerd <laughs> <laughs> okay great uh so you mentioned you looked at uh, you know oncology is is coming up in a big way in in uh, i mean genomics is coming up a big way in oncology uh, are there specific uh, oncogenes that you are currently uh, do you commonly use Maybe yes well the most know. common one would be braca which is uh, implicated in breast and ovarian cancers and also some gi cancers like bacterial so breast cancer since it is such a common disease and it is uh, one of the leading causes of uh, death in women worldwide especially more in urban women so any sort of family history if we have we sort of push them towards genomic testing for braca also for breast and ovarian cancers we have specific drugs which target the braca genes so that is coming uh, that is uh, braca testing is very commonly done nowadays then now we have specific gene targets like trastuzumab uh, targets her to new gene so her to which uh, initially was implicated it is implicated in very aggressive cancers so now that we have a drug against it and we have multiple lines of drugs against it we have uh, kind of conquered the her the aggressiveness of her to positive cancers so uh, is there like a certain guidelines that all the oncologists follow or uh, that Uh, yes the american yes. guidelines are they yes the most common ones would be nccn guidelines and asco guidelines uh, there are also european guidelines but uh, since the genomics varies amongst the american patients european patients and indian patients we cannot blindly accept what is applicable for their population to our population so we have to uh, like titrate the drugs like the our patients sometimes don't uh, tolerate that high doses of drugs so we have to decrease them sometimes and uh, taking care that how our patients respond to those medicines we have to uh, follow them but with little modifications so i remember yesterday uh, actually we had dr sainat and one yes. of the papers he had written was that was where he said they tried using a drug with lower um, lower, do- lower dosage yeah. and that helped not just in like you mentioned maybe it's better tolerance but also the fact that it the cost of the drug was very high yes and, and as a result i think you can uh, you can yes we can try uh, if we can get uh, that similar anti anti cancer effect at a lower dose we will be able to uh, save the patient of many side effects and definitely the cost your the phrase and and doctors use it quite a lot that prevention is better than cure yes. but you were mentioning that a lot of doc, a lot of the patients that come to you are coming at a later stage at a later stage yes so what are your thoughts about uh, you know uh, about prevention um, and well as far as cancer prevention is um, concerned the genetic diseases cannot be prevented the only thing to prevent is that you can do is avoid tobacco in all its forms that is a one definite uh, prevention the other thing is that in cancer prevention uh, is important but more important would be early detection early detection uh, kind of pushes uh, keeps you in the curative aim group because then we can cure you we have available medicines we can get the tumor out and treat you accordingly and you will have less toxicity also from the medications cancer medica- cancer medications are toxic and uh, patients have some side effects but that is something we have to bear because we need cure from this disease so so essentially what you're saying is that when you look at an overall outcome of a disease uh, you have obviously have the genetics and yes. and some of that might not be avoidable but you do also yes. have early detection yes but you do have other things that you cause yourself like you mentioned yes, uh, smoking yes. and, and other things that might put you at higher risk category yes. than otherwise so i think you what you're saying is that if you can 
do a prevention, you know, possible, then yes, if not early if not detection. early detection is your best bet. Is your best bet. Yeah. So, um, is that what you were thinking when you did the genome patri test? Yeah. So, I took the genome patri three years ago. I was very excited. I obviously can't uh, reveal what I got in it, but uh, I was happy I got tested that way. And I know what diseases I am at risk of and what I have to look out for. And, and you didn't do the, the Medica map, which was the, you know, which drugs, you're too young to be able yeah. to, uh, to really be worried about yes. which medications. But one of the other things that you also do is to see if, if certain, if you are uh, likely to respond well to certain medications. Yes. Or, or I not. also got an additional, I think, complementary report from Genome Patri uh, for my susceptibility to COVID. So it showed that you have moderate susceptibility and the kind of COVID I got was like, it was not very mild, it was the moderate type. So that was like, it was kind of a pre-warning. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, like we mentioned before, I think cancer is not an easy thing. You, you, you deal a lot with the patients, families and all of yeah. that. Um, how do you keep positive? You're, I mean, so far you, you always look cheerful and happy. Yes. So what keeps you so positive and how do you pass on your your uh, energy uh, to the you know, families yes. and the patients that you meet? So when you're dealing with such a difficult diagnosis and there's depression all around you, people are sad and fighting such a difficult disease, you have to be cheerful as in you have to enjoy whatever life you have because you never know when you may come up with this diagnosis. People are enjoying till one day before and next day they develop a symptom and get diagnosed with cancer. So enjoy life as much as you can. <laughs> that, that has to be done. Then that's the motto of most cancer people. And when would you suggest that people should come and meet an oncologist for the first, first time? Uh, so whenever you develop a uh, cancer, uh, when, you, when patients see an oncologist, it is usually when uh, the diagnosis is made by another doctor. So that causes some delay. So obviously if you have a lump somewhere or a big swelling, it is better to get it ruled out by a cancer doctor. Because then uh, uh, some unnecessary interventions may happen, which may compromise the cure, which may be possible if it, that field is not contaminated. As this especially happens in ortho cancers. Like they, uh, when people get a fracture fixed outside by someone and it is due to a bone cancer, the field somehow gets contaminated and it compromises the chance of cure. So any swelling, any weight, significant weight loss, such kind of um, symptoms, you should see a cancer doctor. Thank you. And what are the challenges that you have experienced so far in the medical profession? Uh, is there something that you wish was better uh, or something that you hope that maybe we can change in this, uh, in our ecosystem? Mm, yes, I guess there has always been some uh, apprehension about girls being in surgical branches. So uh, during my residency, I was the only girl amongst 24 candidates. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was very difficult for me. But after uh, I passed out, a lot of girls came and it became a common thing. So maybe not judging girls as, as in girls are equally good surgeons. Okay. And the characteristics of, uh, there are like a few characteristics people say that surgeon should have like a heart of a lion and a hand and fingers of a girl. So your uh, fingers have to be as delicate and the way you handle tissues should be like girls do. So I would uh, ask if one thing is there, I would uh, hope that women, uh, women are not judged. So, but if they want, you're supposed to have the hands of a girl. Yeah. You're already yeah. 50% there. Yes. Right? Now all you need is the heart of a lion. Yeah. Oh, that I have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, so anything you would uh, tell like young, uh, you know, young doctors or, or young students who want to become doctors, uh, you know, what keeps you excited? Motivated. How will you, how will you motivate them? Yeah, uh, firstly, you should be very aware about the challenges of the branch, the difficult work timings, the lack of personal life. And you should do this only if you are very, very motivated, for sure. And then if you are in a branch that you love, work will not seem like work. Great. And anything else, Dr. Kirk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, all I want to stress again upon early detection, definitely quit tobacco and avoid tobacco even as secondhand passive smoke 
exercise well eat fruits that's all that's in your hands to prevent cancer thank you so much thank i think you. these are things that people don't necessarily yes. uh, attribute uh, cancer to but uh, i think if people adopt healthier lifestyles i think they will yes. they will get better and yes. maybe you know it's... and if you have family history definitely get yourself evaluated go to a genetic counselor get evaluated whether or not you are eligible for genetic testing your family history will be taken you will be counseled about the risks and whether or not uh, you have to decide whether or not you will undergo those clinical tests which are required for early detection of the disease so the best thing is go to a genetic counselor if you have family history of any disease as in two or more patients in are there in your immediate family having any specific disease and then they will guide you further so so that gets me to the point where you know uh, we offer a lot of pre genetic counseling uh, pre genetic counseling right when people are trying to understand you know whether they are eligible for a test and if they are eligible what are the options uh, that's something that we do at map my genome yeah. so that people can help to understand better but from your perspective uh, what value do you think genetic counseling adds i uh, as whatever we have read whatever we have been through genetic testing should never be done with, without genetic counseling because uh, you may or may not be uh, prepared to get the uh, no uh, the knowledge and the information that is there in the genome you need proper understanding of it what risks are involved as in you can't just say that you have risk of colon cancer the patient should be prepared that yes i want to know what my risks are and if i am detected with a higher risk i am willing to comply with testing so if patient agrees to all that and is properly counseled that if so and so diseases show up in your uh, genetic counseling then we will give, advise you to go for such, such and such tests at regular intervals if patient say yes uh, then they have to go ahead with genetic counseling so uh, genetic testing so genetic counseling is indispensable it is a must pre and post test counseling has to be done one of the other things that we have also now started uh, doing and we did that uh, a few, uh, i mean a couple of years ago was we combined the genetic testing with um, with biochemistry tests as well because okay. we felt that would bring in the most yes value from uh, yes. understanding of the data perspective so so the genes uh, the defect in the genes sometimes like uh, the genes may not be defective but there is post translational uh, post translation translation sometimes the proteins don't express the way they should so their biochemistry comes in handy that the gene is okay but the its effect is not coming into play so at every level we have to find out where exactly the defect is so putting different types of data is yeah, always happen. every it is because the gene may be there but it may or may not be expressed in the way we want it yeah and uh, you know just wanted to maybe add a little yeah. bit that uh, one of the uh, things that we've added because many doctors told us that uh, when you looked at ngs testing yes um the cost became prohibitive so yes. if you are looking at uh, doing a genetic test so one of the uh, cancer panels that we developed which is called the dna onconex yes. we we basically did that for five specific uh, five specific cancers yes. and you mentioned yeah. braca testing yes. as one of them so that that and uh, head and neck and and esophageal and uh, lung and and thyroid cancer we okay. created something so that we could go deep into yes. understanding you know whether yes. a drug is going to work for them or not yes um so i think you know as more and more oncologists uh, start adopting genetics i think it becomes better but you know if people still always uh, if they're coming late you know they have to first come to uh, yeah. a surgical oncologist yes. but eventually over a period of time i think maybe india will get to a point where we will where we start will using get early detection yes yeah. absolutely early detection or if not uh, you know um, you know making sure that people are at least aware that they need to come yes. much earlier to see your to see the doctor than coming late stage so yes. thank you very thank much, you so much and uh, uh, i wish you all the best in your thank uh, you. journey and, and keep up the great work thank, thank you very much